Hello and welcome to Power Tips. In this video, we are going to look at how to build a dependent assembly plugin project where we will use an external library in our plugin project and then write a code and then build it and then see how the package can be deployed to Dataverse. So let's get started. In order to use dependent assemblies, we are going to use Power Platform CLI. That means that you will have to first install the Power Platform CLI and the link to installation of Power Platform CLI is available in the video's description. So first thing that we want to do is um, initiate our plugin project. And in order to initiate the plugin project, first you need to make sure that you're creating an empty directory and making sure that the directory's name will be your namespace. So uh, we're going to first create a directory and you can create a directory using uh, Explorer or, or using your command shell. And now I already have the command shell open here. So I'm going to just use the uh, command shell um, uh, command in the PowerShell. So I'm getting here and then I'm going to name my uh, directory as uh, powertips.demo. Okay, and enter. And that created my directory. I'm, I am gonna go inside my directory now. Okay. So once you are in that directory, then you have to use the pack CLI command to initiate your plugin project. So the command is pack plugin init. Okay, and then you press enter. And what it's going to do is it's going to initiate or create a new plugin project for you in that directory. So as you, as, as you can see here, it says Dataverse plugin class library with PowerTips uh, power demo was created successfully in this directory. Now, if you go in this directory, you should see a plugin um, project file, which is the CS project file, which we can open up in Visual Studio. So let's go ahead and then open up that project in Visual Studio. Now the project is loaded in Visual Studio and you can see that it already has a plugin base class created for you. It already has the, um, the key added for you and uh, a demo plugin onecs file. Uh, and then it also has this dependence, uh, dependencies added. Uh, now, normally you don't need to restore all the packages, but sometimes I've seen that the packages do not restore automatically. So if the packages are not restored, if you can see at the bottom of the screen, you can see that, um, you know, you see the message saying that uh, this package was restored. But if it is not restored, you can simply just click on uh, solution and then say restore all new get packages. Okay. Now, because the uh, initiation of the plugin project only gives you the CS project file. It doesn't give you the um, Visual Studio solution file. Um, the Visual Studio solution file is automatically created for you. Now, you could change this. So you can change the name of the file. You can say rename, uh, and then I can just say power, power tips, right? Uh, or solution, something like that. And then at the end, you just hit uh, save all. And that what it would do is it would also create that solution file uh, for you. So now it's asking me to create that solution file and I can just save it and that adds the solution as well. Uh, and then it just says, okay, um, you no, know, it has been modified outside. So we'll just overwrite. Save. Okay. okay. So now our solution is ready. Our plugin is ready. Everything is ready. Um, now we would look at our plugin base. Okay. So we open up our plugin base just to uh, see what it has. Uh, so as you can see, it gives us the guide for the plugin development. It also gives us the link to the best practices and the guidance uh, provided by Microsoft. Um, and it has the, like how we have regularly created our plugin base classes. It has all the stuff that we need. Now, what you could do is if you want to change it um, to your liking, you can still do that, right? 
um, but yeah um, and then they give you a plugin one.cs file that uh, gives you how to use it right so it, it tells you uh, that what plugin one uh, is inheriting from that plugin base class and then uh, it, uh, it gets this um, unsecure and secure config from the plugin base and then uh, it does it has this uh, override method uh, that is going to be our logic uh, class uh, or will contain all the logic uh, which will which normally is the execute method now they have uh, mentioned uh, they have given here the method is called execute data bus plugin but it does the same thing right and it, they have given a lot of nice codes uh, and then told you how to do things like what are the things that you should be looking for uh, for example like you know check for entity on which plugin would be registered so here is the some some of the checks that you can do uh, now you can combine this with the sparkle as well and then try to uh, try to use that uh, which we'll uh, look into uh, that in some future videos uh, how to integrate sparkle with this uh, dependent assembly plugin project but our intent today is to use an external library in this plugin project and then uh, try to try to build it and then see what the output is and then how we can register that in Dataverse. So the plugin uh, or the assembly that we're going to use today is newtonsoft.json. So let's go ahead and then add that um, manage NuGet package and let's go to browse. And then we'll use uh, Newton soft or JSON. Oh. Something happened and I lost it. Uh, there you go. Newton soft or JSON. Now, once we have installed newtonsoft.json, uh, we just want to um, use it. So now, let's uh, let's implement the newtonsoft.json in the plugin one.cs file. So for that, I'm gonna just temporarily create a class file or a class object uh, account, and it would just have email, activity, uh, created date, and few roles. Okay. Now, as we have this class created as account, I'm gonna uncomment this code that Microsoft has already provided as part of the template. And then if the entity name is uh, account, then I am gonna initialize the uh, account object that I had created below. Okay. So my account object is created. Then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that mutants of JSON uh, library and one of the method from that uh, library is uh, JSON convert dot serialize. So I'm, I'm going to serialize this account object and then I'm going to just paste it. Okay. So uh, let's do string account JSON is equal to JSON convert JSON convert dot serialize object and then that would be the account object from above this is just an example right I, I mean this is not a real use case that you would actually use uh, and then the good idea is to also do some logging so I'm going to add some logging here so local plugin context dot uh, trace and then inside trace method, I'm going to just call out that initializing account object. Okay. And then similarly, I'm going to say serializing. Let me build it again. Okay, so now this is successfully built. Uh, so next we would use the plugin registration tool.
you can use the command pack tool prt this would always invoke a new version of the plugin registration tool now i already have a plugin registration tool open on my screen uh, and if you have used the newer version of the prt then if you click on the register button you should see this register new package as an option so you click on that register new package option you click on the plugin package file uh, and then you navigate to the location where your uh, project is and inside the project you go to the bin so let me just go back here so you go inside the bin and then inside debug if it is a debug or release inside if it's a release mode uh, and then you you would see that this uh, new pkg file is already um, available to you so you pick that file open it and then um, and then you can add it to the solution uh, the name and the version would uh, would be defaulted uh, by based on the plugin package file uh, and then you click on import so what's going to happen here is um, the plugin package is going to get installed and within plugin package you will have the assembly and then within the assembly you will have the plugins and within the plugins then you can register plugin steps so now if we try to find our assembly so we find the assembly over here okay and then this is a plugin so this is looking as usual like regular right but the thing that has changed in the plugin registration tool is this assembly is actually part of a, a package so if you go to uh, this view and then say display by package you can see that there's a package called pmav underscore powertables dot demo okay uh, and that's the prefix is coming because of the solution that you choose so based on the solutions prefix the prefix gets added to the package and then uh, rest of the thing is the package name and then the assembly is part of the package and then the plugin is part of the assembly as usual right so that's the, the only difference is the assembly is part of the package now so you could have multiple or you could have one package with multiple plugin projects as well and then everything could be bundled up in one single package uh, which also can make things easier so it, it, it's not just for like you know external or dependent uh, um, assemblies but you could also use it for you know, multiple plugin projects as well i have not tried that but i think so that conceptually might work uh, okay so going back to the uh, assembly mode uh, so inside the assembly then i go to the plugin and then i would register a new step on the uh, create of account and i'll keep it as post operation and then register a step now this is just for testing whether our code is working or not okay so let's go ahead and then create a new account okay filling in all the required field and then uh, save okay. Ooh we got an error okay let's see what the error is uh, so because we have added some tracing uh, we'll find out what the error is uh, i normally use a plugin trace log to look at all the tracings so let's look at the so it says input string was not in the correct format uh, that is the error and it says initializing account object serializing account object so it was able to serialize the account object and then here is where it is throwing an error uh, okay so let me go and fix that i think i did not do a rebuild so let's try this again um, let's do a rebuild so the nuget package is uh, updated so now if we have to update our package so we are not updating the assembly so if you go to the plugin registration tool and then try to select the assembly and then say update it's gonna say it's part of the package so you need to update the package right 
So you have to go to that view, the view that I showed before, go to that package, select that package and then say update. And uh, select the NUPKG file and then update. Okay, so now the package is updated. So let's try to save the account again. And now the account is saved. So let's go to our logs and uh, check the new logs that would arrive. So there you go, the new logs arrived and then it says initializing account object and then serializing account object, okay? Uh, that's how you would uh, you would work with uh, dependent uh, assemblies using uh, plugin packages instead, okay? That's it folks in this video. If you like this video, then I'm sure that you would like these two videos as well. So check them out and uh, do follow me and hit the subscribe button. Until next time.